what does it mean for a Christian to be in the world? Now, in our own century, the 20th, we have reached what has been called the age of the laity. All Christians are laity in that laity means laos, the people of God. I think the uh, people are the church. I like to think in terms of the Vatican Council's language on the laity. It is that part of the church that can go most places where the church couldn't otherwise go. Laity, the people, you and me. What does it mean to be the Christian laity in the world, to take the church places it couldn't otherwise go? Just what is our responsibility in serving the Lord who made heaven and earth? The laity, as active, creative force for the church, for God and humanity, finds its greatest challenge today in the hustling, bustling world of freeways and time clocks the world of technology and long weekends. Los Angeles, that not always heavenly city of angels, symbol of our increasingly urban society. Here, in February 1978, a new chapter was opened in a never-ending story, the story of men and women of faith seeking to embody in personal and corporate ways the gospel, the good news of God's love. The North American Congress of the Laity did not originate or have the final word on the question, what does it mean to be the laity in the world? But it has become a benchmark, an important point of reference in a day when Christians of many churches are discovering one another as friends and partners in hope. Hope is a quality of the spirit all Christians share. At the Congress, 800 men and women of different races, politics and cultures took a risk dare to meet together to share ideas and experiences and laughter. The theme, divine creation, human creativity, points first to God, the source of life, the source, too, of all Christian hope for this world and the next. And the theme also points to humanity, to us, made in God's image. We, the laity, are creative with our hands and our minds and our faith. We make things, we build societies. Everyone is creative, but when we talk about the creative Christian laity in the world, we have to remember an important point made at the Congress by Anglican Bishop Festo Cavendry of Uganda. All the creative activities of man keep falling apart until they are brought together by that dynamic power. What is that? Not force but power, and that simply means when the love of Christ, the love which is stronger than death, the love which counted the price, brings all the broken or breaking human creativity together and out of chaos gives creativity itself. These two Christian laymen walking along a rocky road in the Texas hill country are Howard Butt and Malcolm Muggeridge. Mr. Budd is a businessman, an executive with his family's grocery company. He, his wife, and associates in three small charitable foundations convened the Congress of the Laity. Malcolm Muggeridge, renowned British author, delivered the closing speech of the Congress. Once a stranger to Christianity, his rediscovery of Jesus Christ has produced surprises and celebrations in recent years. Howard Butt and Malcolm Muggeridge, Christians different in backgrounds and accents, different, too, in their experience of faith, but two who are one in spirit, came together several months after the Congress to share their thoughts on the laity alive in hope, the laity creative for Christ in the world. Of course, your Congress of the laity has had a great deal of publicity of one sort and another, and uh, many justifiably complimentary remarks about it, some not so complimentary. But what I ask myself is, what has it achieved? You see, I've been attending functions of that kind, roughly speaking, over the last 50 years, from the beginnings of the League of Nations onwards. People getting together, expressing elevated sentiments, uh, projecting very uh, admirable programs, one sort and another. And you know, 
nothing's come of it at all, except that the chaos of the world has grown ever more notable. Now, do you think it's going to be like that with the Congress of the Laity? I think that's the reason that the Congress of the Laity made no pronouncements, and we didn't try to institute any organization. Our purpose was much more modest. It is to talk about the laity, first our unity in Christ. How do we express that? And how do we experience it? Number two, that we talk about lay people coming into intellectual maturity about their faith. How do we love God with our minds? Third, how do we as lay people interact with the world, with our culture? in terms of daily Christian obedience. And of course, the purpose of the Congress was not to point either to the Congress or to the laity, but to point to Christ, who is the source of our unity, our maturity, and our authentic Christian obedience in the world. Seeking Christian unity, loving God with our minds, interacting as Christians with the culture, big tasks, and for us, for the laity, we're busy with jobs and raising the children. And besides, isn't the clergy in charge of such things? Each of us, lay Christians and clergy, share the work of the gospel in the world, and the laity cannot expect or allow the clergy to do our work. Dr. Martin Marty, church historian and popular author, spoke to this issue at the Congress. All Christians are laity in that laity means laos, the people of God. The problem of the laity and the clergy in our world is not a theological problem, therefore, it's a practical problem. About a hundred years ago, the clergy began to be a highly professionalized caste. You had to go to graduate schools to enter it. You didn't just get the call of the Holy Spirit. You need certain kinds of languages, certain kinds of expertise. Soon you develop certain kinds of jargon, certain kind of mannerism, and so on. And like all professions, therefore, there's a kind of an excluding that goes on. This meant, I think, for a long time, that uh, the kind of laity that uh, interested the clergy were those laymen and laywomen who were most like clergymen themselves. In Catholicism, uh, ex-priests, ex-nuns. In Protestantism, ex-seminarians. People who learned that lingo. That's what we least need. I certainly don't deny the gifts of such people, and I'm happy for them. But I like to think in terms of the uh, Vatican Council's language on the laity. It is that part of the church that can go most places where the church couldn't otherwise go. Speakers at the Congress of the Laity discuss both the social realities challenging us and the religious resources equipping us as creative laity, alive in hope. The speakers included author Abigail McCarthy, former President Gerald Ford, and famed journalist James Reston. I cannot speak for our friends from Canada and Mexico, but I am convinced that in this country there is a longing for something precious that has been lost. We don't know quite what it is, but like our friend Zacchaeus, many of us are trying to see Jesus, but cannot see him for the darkness or hear him for the noise. Sometimes as we look out, we may see things about organized religion that are not wholly to our individual liking. But let us also remember it is the church that brings or binds our world together. I drew a great sense of hope, however, from what Mark Gibbs said almost parenthetically. The laity, he said, are naturally ecumenical. They don't work in Baptist labor unions or in Episcopal stores or live on Presbyterian streets. First of all, this question of unity, because I suppose most people would think of that in terms of all these uh, negotiations and things that are going on between different religious bodies trying to work out an agreement and continually failing. Now, what do you think about that aspect? Well, I think that our, uh, I think in one sense we are benefiting as the laity from this kind of discussion, but I think that we're talking about a much more grassroots kind of, uh, 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 of thing in which uh, really in a sense 
we, we learn that Christian unity, unity is not something that's manufactured or created. It is something uh, that is there. Uh, the question is, do we accept it? Do we recognize it? Because I very much agree with that. I think this idea of negotiating so that you, you like one side says, oh, we'll go a bit easy on papal infallibility if you'd be a little easier about the validity of your Anglican orders, that, that sort of thing, I think at best would create mirth in heaven, don't you? But I tell you one thing, it's a curious in a way, and it's a purely personal thing, which I can't help regarding with the utmost humility as almost like a special grace, that as my old mug is known to a certain number of people, particularly in England and sometimes elsewhere, now it's associated with taking a Christian position. It very often happens to me that someone will come up to me and indicate that they are also Christians. And I can't convey to you the joy that this has given me. And it's also something that has both moved me and made me aware of what I wasn't aware of before that there is a Christian family. You see, it would never occur to me with any of these people to ask them what denomination they belong to. Yes. And that diversity being used to proclaim the glory, the wonder, the splendor of the Incarnation, and that all of us who are involved in that, whatever position we may have in life, however we may stand, intellectually or in any other way, we stand hand in hand. Exactly, and the richness of the tapestry adds to uh, the reality of the unity, this the is, oneness. This is what I feel. The Congress of the Laity itself illustrates a moving into unity and a diversity within the one Christian family. Well, I've met people who have no connection with the church, very little exposure to the Christian faith, all the way to the veteran Bible conference attenders and uh, clergy and so on, so it's been a good mix. I guess it's this diversity that has made the Congress interesting because uh, we have really 800 people and I suspect 800 different sets of expectations that have come. I am from Mexico. Uh, I think that for us Mexicans it's important to know um, everything about uh, the United States and we have uh, experience in, uh, with Americans in other, under other aspects and I thought it was very important to know the American people in the religious experience. Well, I come to the Congress to uh, better myself, be more able to lead in church work. Tremendous excitement when we received the invitation. Um, expectancy for a lot of Christian people from lots of different backgrounds to come together with a very common purpose. One of the things that impressed them most, of course, was not just the fact that there was a Congress of the laity, but the fact that someone had taken the pains to include a significant cross-section of minorities. What we need now is if we're doctors that we've got to run into the lawyers and the lawyers into the plumbers and the homemakers into the teachers, um, the smelly people and the uh, sweet smelly people, the uh, too beautiful and the too ugly, uh, people of different backgrounds. I think the church is that. As diverse as we are, but united in Christ, what a witness to hope that is. Perhaps strong enough to push back the darkness and quiet the noise that keeps the world from seeing and hearing Jesus and putting hope